Hey guys, this is Ghostbit Miner coming at you from the power of YouTube through the internet itself. Okay guys, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to change the screen on a Dell laptop. Stay tuned guys, so I can show you how to do it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and turn on the computer. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm talking about with the screen. So again, let's go ahead and take a look at it to see what I'm talking about. Not a really big major damage but enough that it is noticeable. So we're going to go ahead and switch out this screen and make a video about it. So these are the couple of damaged dots that were caused when this little laptop was shipped to me. So right now you can't really see it too well, but if you are playing a game or watching something with darker colors, this is super apparent and can get very annoying very fast. So we're going to switch this display out. Uh, the current display is a 15.6 inch display and is 1366 by 768. Um, not too bad for the size, so we're going to go ahead and switch this out. Okay, so after turning your computer off, you're going to go ahead and unscrew these 8 screws on the back of the laptop. And the reason for this is you want to disconnect the internal battery so you have no power going to the screen when you're replacing it. Again, with a little cheap screen replacement like this, you don't want to short out anything. So it's always best to have everything unpowered from the power source. So let's go ahead and take these screws off, guys, and I'll show you how to change the screen, which is pretty easy. I'm going to say about a five minute job. So these are the screws that are in the back of the laptop. Oh, and there it goes. I'm going to grab that with my screwdriver. Good thing for magnetic screwdrivers. So these are the way the eight screws look. We're going to go ahead and put that to the side with the other ones. And now we're going to start prying off the back of the laptop itself. So the best thing to do is get yourself a plastic sponger tool like this one right here. If you want to keep your laptop in a good condition, do not use a metal one because it will scratch up the laptop. So definitely plastic on plastic is a better way to go. To reduce the amount of scratches and scruffs on the back. So you're going to pry it back and forth just like this. And once you open it up, you want to put a finger in there to keep some tension on it. And then after you do this last clip, it should come off very easy like that. You can put that to the side. And these are the internal aspects of your laptop. So now we're going to go ahead and unplug the battery by pulling straight up on this cable right here. So go ahead and grab your sponger tool again and we're going to start by prying off the top of the plastic portion of the laptop right between the back and the front. We're going to pull, pry just back and forth. Be gentle with it. Sorry about this camera angle guys, I did not notice it. Uh, you'll just pry back and forth. You'll start seeing the separation from the bezel of the screen from the back of the laptop. That's what you want to see. So again, just be nice and careful, especially around the camera and the microphone area, because you don't want to replace more parts that are good by breaking them. So let's go ahead and start doing that. You can hear the unclipping of the laptop. Sorry that you can't see it. My fault, guys. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how it looks when it does separate right now. So that's the way it should look, as you have that panel gap right there. Just pull gently down on it, especially around the uh, camera and the mic. This looks like it has been repaired already because from coming from Dell, you shouldn't really have this adhesive glue on it. So you're going to pull it down. Yeah, definitely as you can see some of the adhesive is missing. So someone already repaired this screen in the past. There you go. So make sure to take off all that glue because you don't want any type of gap so dust and junk doesn't get inside there between the screen and the bezel. Here is the number for the bezel itself and the screen. So you can take a look at that right there. This might help you out. There you go, there's a QR code as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and start taking these screws off that are holding the screen in place. There's only four of them. These screws are different than the ones on the back of the laptop. So make sure you don't confuse them with each other so you, you don't have any issues with putting that bezel back on. After you get those screws off, the panel comes off very easy. Be very gentle because there is a ribbon cable on the back of it connecting it to its power source. 
Yep, just put it down like that. And there's a kit cable right in the back. So now what you wanna do is go ahead and pull up on the tape right here. Be very careful. There is a retaining bracket on this side. So you don't just wanna pull straight up. You wanna unclip the retaining bracket, just like that. And there's a little tiny foam piece right here just so the connectors didn't touch another piece of metal. You go ahead and put that somewhere to the side. Or if you want to, you can just stick it there. And gently go ahead and take off your display. Again, you don't want to break the ribbon cable because that's another additional expense. More pieces you have to take off. And that's the way that little connector looks on the back of the screen. And here is some more numbers, so if you want to get the exact screen replacement, now is the time to pause the screen and type that into eBay or Amazon. So that's the old display. Again, you can save it for another project, especially since it only had a couple little defects in it. You can use it for like a portable display unit or even maybe a portable game system. I'll show you in a future video how to do that. So here's our new uh, screen straight from China. It's beautiful. Beautiful, isn't it? We're going to look at the numbers on the back. Again, I got this one for $11 on eBay. I was bidding on it. Pretty good deal. And since the other one only had a couple defects, you know, might as well upgrade to this one. So let's go to install it, guys. It's a pretty easy job to do. So let's go to insert screwing back in those four screws. Like I was saying in the beginning of the video, this is about a five to 10 minute job. You really don't need high skill level to do this. But it's a really good upgrade, especially if you crack your screen or if you're just tired of those white little splotchy splotches on there, like I am. There you go. Very nice. So let's go ahead and start working on the screen bezel itself. So for some reason, whoever replaced the screen used adhesive tape to tape this bezel on. The good thing is I actually have adhesive bezel tape as well. So I'm going to use it just because I'm a little wary about why this other person used it. Maybe the bezel didn't set right. Maybe there's a couple retaining clips broken on it. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on after I take the other remaining bezel tape off. And the reason why you want to take this, uh, I guess you could say residue from the tape off, is it might leave the bezel a little uneven and it could easily get dust and hair and debris in there. And you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna have a messy screen and it's hard to get out. So I'm gonna leave the link to all these things that I'm using today, my toolkit, uh, the bezel tape, and whatever else I have in here uh, that we're using for today's project in the link below, um, in the link below so you can go ahead and get what I'm using. I used this actually on a Surface Pro before and it did a really well job. Once you take off the white paper tape on the back, it sticks pretty well. A little overkill for today's build, but again, since the last person used it, I'm a little wary. They might have used it because the bezel had some broken clips, retaining clips on there. But definitely make sure to take all of it off because you don't want some uneven bezels. It looks nasty on it, especially if you're going to, you know, fixing a friend's computer or if you fix your own computer, you don't want to look at something nasty. So let's take all that junk off of there and we'll go ahead and replace it with our new bezel tape. So I'm pretty much just putting it in the same places the previous person that repaired this screen uh, had them in. The cool thing about this laptop is when I use a service item code on the back of it, it's actually still under warranty. It looks like recently they had the battery replaced, which is good. Saves me money. And I'm assuming it had some type of screen issue. But that's the only thing bad about shipping things in the US, especially through FedEx or USPS, is they really don't care about your packages. There's a lot of memes of uh, the delivery people are just throwing your package to your house. And I'm assuming that happened to me um, when I got this on an eBay bid for a recently priced, it had no screen defects. And when I got it, it had a screen defect. So it's just uh, one of those things you have to worry about when shipping an item to a uh, buyer or if you're a buyer getting the item messed up. So let's go ahead and put all these little pieces of adhesive tape on here. 
and then we'll go ahead and put this bezel back on again this is not something you need to do but if you do see something like mine might as well do it there we go looking good let's go ahead and put that on so here we go guys so let's go ahead and plug back in that battery we're gonna go ahead and see and test if the screen is properly fitted and working you always want to do that before screwing everything back on I do have a mod mat that is anti-static but just for y'all I'm gonna go to put back on this plastic shroud so just in case you're working on a metal table we definitely want to put that up back on before turning anything back on so let's go ahead and power it on interesting nothing's turning on moment of truth moment of truth okay got some light on the yeah, get perfect so that's a good see that's perfect that's all you really want to see we'll go ahead and start screwing everything back in awesome guys okay so now we're gonna go ahead and unpeel the double-sided tape that we originally put on there again this is all secondary stuff you really don't have to do this but for some reason the last person that worked on this laptop did this so I'm gonna go ahead and do it uh, mine might have actually broken retaining clips so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this So if yours does not have the uh, glue that mine had on, you don't have to do this extra step. It makes it a lot faster, you just clip it in place. But again, I have no clue why that had this adhesive tape on there. But since I have it, I might as well do the same. It might actually help it stay in place a little better, help keep dust out and hair out and all that stuff, especially if you have pets. So I'm gonna do it. Again, the link is in uh, right down below so if you want this adhesive tape as well uh, just go ahead and click on that link and it will take you right to Amazon I think it's like five dollars but it comes with a lot it's definitely if you're a reseller or if you work on a lot of projects you'll definitely be using this tape off and on just like that let's go ahead and make sure the camera's on top and place it right back on there make sure to push evenly on all sides until you hear all the clips done so we're gonna go to start by screwing in or we're gonna go to finish by screwing in all these screws that we pulled out again there's eight screws on the back sorry about my phone I'm famous we're gonna go ahead and start putting all these screws in there one by one I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up in a little bit because who wants to watch a guy putting eight screws in a laptop not me <laughs> so here we go we're gonna go screw this thing in and I'll go to play some background noise again same screws There's a little bit of uh, screw gel on the back to help it hold it in place and here we go let's speed it up and let's listen to some beautiful techno music Okay, let's go ahead and turn it back on and see how it looks. Ah, uh, beautiful. No more watch blotches. Not too bad at all. And let's go ahead and let it load. But so far, this $11 screen looks pretty well on this $250 laptop. Let's let it load. Oh my goodness, guys. No more white blotches anywhere to be seen. The display is proper and is proper resolution for this uh, sixth generation i5. Not bad at all, guys. So please, if you like this video, like below. If you dislike, dislike. But please subscribe so I can make more content like this. Anyways, guys, Ghost Bit Miner out. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.